Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Gerbil Space Program 1.12. During a recent live stream, a question came up about the Scramjet Aerospikes atmospheric range. That is, if it stays in the atmosphere, how far can it go? And so I decided to test that. Uh, we have no liquid oxygen loaded, so we can't use the aerospikes in order to get to orbit. Uh, that does not mean that I can remove the aerospikes because the whole thing is balanced with the aerospikes on the tail and they are very, very heavy. So we can't just take them off. So we have to carry them along, but at least we are not carrying the oxygen, which is more than 100 tons. And so the scramjet aerospike can climb very efficiently and it can also get to a faster speed on its initial scramjet mode, which is much more efficient than the high power scramjet mode that we used to push beyond Mach 10 previously. So here we are activating the scramjet after climbing very, very vigorously. And it takes some management though. We don't want to overheat it, but it is accelerating past Mach 5. The scramjet aerospike does have turbojets in order to get off the runway, and then it switches to a ramjet mode. And basically, its uh, turbojet ramjets are modeled after the Sabre engines for Skylon. And then it has the scramjet that activates at Mach 5 and brings us, in this case, without the oxygen load, well past Mach 10. But uh, basically, it tops out at just under Mach 11. And I decided to go across the Atlantic from Cape Canaveral and see where it ended up. This question came about as far as comparing this system to the Dark Star from Microsoft Flight Sim. The Dark Star is much smaller, it's much lighter, but it only carries one person as far as I know. Uh, maybe some other payload, but uh, we have a number of Kerbals inside and it probably has space for about eight and maybe some payload. Now, of course, if we actually carried some payload, that might affect our performance. But here we are cruising across the Atlantic very quickly at nearly Mach 11. And I have a cockpit here and we have all that information in front of us. But yeah, so the Dark Star in Microsoft Flight Sim goes about 5,000 nautical miles. I tested it and it goes at Mach 10. Uh, this is not directly based on the Dark Star in any way. I have another Dark Star for Kerbal Space Program that I had made. Uh, but as it turns out, its range is pretty much the same, weirdly enough. I mean, the fuel quantity is based on the fuel quantity that we needed to get to orbit, not for this purpose at all. Uh, but uh, it seems to cover about 5,000 nautical miles. Here we are over France, and we're still going Mach 11. And so our top speed is about the same. There is a high power scramjet mode, but it's not fuel efficient at all. So it wouldn't be a good idea to use it for a range test. And here I, I started descending because it takes a while to descend with this. It takes a while to turn at Mach 11 as well. So we start descending and we end up landing in the vicinity of Bulgaria. Uh, it's not entirely clear whether we were in Romania or Bulgaria, but somewhere around there. I was trying to go for Athens, but I didn't quite get there. Slowing down with this is not necessarily an easy task, though it turned out to be fairly smooth, but with Darkstar in Kerbal Space Program, my version of it, Darkstar had some adverse effects when slowing down. Uh, this seems a little bit nicer on the whole. Even in Flight Sim, I think Darkstar is a little bit finicky sometimes when you're slowing down, and you have to be careful with it. Now, the Dark Star in Microsoft Flight Sim gets up to Mach 3.7 before activating the scramjet. Uh, it doesn't, I think, have a ramjet mode. Uh, it just has really souped up SR-71 engines. Uh, but in this case, we did have the ramjet and could get to Mach 5. I think that's probably more realistic. I don't think the scramjets work very well at Mach 3.7. The benefit to the Mach 3.7 level for Flight Sim is that uh, the Dark Star is actually pretty good at Mach 3.7 at altitude, so you could extend your range at that speed even if you're not going Mach, uh, Mach 10. And the Mach 10 fuel is separate from the Mach 3.7 fuel in Flight Sim. In this case, with the Scramjet Aerospike, it's the same fuel, it's just liquid hydrogen all the way. That probably means that this plane should be more efficient in its jet ramjet mode 
than the Dark Star would be because the Dark Star is using probably some variant of kerosene. Anyway, here we are coming back down and I managed to keep it safe, but we're not aimed for any runway or anything. Uh, nice sort of mist and sun in the background. I tried to make sure that we weren't landing it at nighttime, so we curved to the south quite a lot. And here's touchdown. I was trying to make sure that the body flap did not get hurt here. So uh, that's why I'm at this camera angle to check out the body flap and make sure it's all right. And then we slow down. Unfortunately, even though I scooched the landing gear back after a previous test, it still seemed to rear up. I had checked the center of mass in the SPH after a previous test and tried to move the landing gear back, but it turns out to still be tail heavy on landing uh, compared to where the landing gear is. So yeah, I'll have to readjust that. An interesting silhouette as I wrap it up here with the scramjet aerospike having covered 5,000 nautical miles in the atmosphere. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.